This podcast features adults using adult language. All right, dungeons and and what and or dragons. And what? Ah. Or I guess <laughs> uh, for the purposes of Dark Sun, it's uh, bone plating and chitons. Chitons. <laughs> it's chiton. Is it chiton? It's yeah. Chiton. Yeah. It's chitonous. Kindness carapace. That's gonna be, that's, that's gonna be, when, when I become an MC, like when I put all this behind me, kindness is going to be my MC kindness. It's your album. It's going to be made of chitin. No, he's going to be MC <laughs> it's not gonna play. It doesn't work. The, uh, his album's going to be called uh, uh, Carapace. Okay, I like it. Anyway, um, yeah, there there's definitely no shortages um, in the carapace department. I would say when it comes to Dark Sun. Can we all agree on that? Yeah. Yeah. Everything is lives inside of another thing that's dead. That's mm-hmm. that, that's how there the universe a, works. There is a carapace in Dark Sun that has its own carapace. You couldn't. You can't throw a carapace. You can't it's, throw it's, something chitinous <laughs> without hitting a carapace. <laughs> it's it's carapaces all the way you down. Carapi carapaces. It's going to hit six. Chitons before it touches the ground. Chitin isn't a thing, is it? <laughs> well, the chitin is the material that um, yeah. makes something chitinous. Yeah. Yeah, carapaces are chitinous. Apparently, you can lose weight eating chitin. I did not know that. Next you time did you, chitin, you know that, is that in true? the movie, you're thinking, you of see carotin, line, you're thinking of carotin. You're built a bit, bit of chitin. Of yeah. chitin. Out of chitinous <laughs> material. What is chitin? It's, it's, like like it's what ants are made from. No, shut you up. You dumbass. It is. I'm it's so fucking ants sick. Ants made of chitin? I'm so sick no, of you, it's Chris. That ant armor. I'm sick. Of, I'm sick to death like of your bullshit. No, it's a real deal. It's a shell? It's, it's, yeah, a, it's shell a shell material. material. It's a little pliable. Exoskeleton. Yeah. Uh, like a should... snail has a chitin? I don't think so. No, that's weird. So, not every sh- <laughs> so is every shell chitinous, but not everything that's chitinous is a shell? No. No. Think you have of, it exactly backwards. Think about if you blew an ant up, and that... that, that Armor would be kind if of. Think about it. Like, no, like, ex, like you made it large. Ant. Like you could have a plate out of that stuff. Like it's segmented. You know like, what I'm talking about? There's all kinds of yeah, stuff yeah, in yeah. there. But you're remember saying, when you were in Texas <laughs> and you found those those that chitons that bugs that cicada? cicada? Yeah, they leave behind chitons. <laughs> but some sh- it's not ch- chitin. It's like. It's like they leave behind steels. It's like a material. <laughs> oh, okay. it is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have plural. Oh, yeah. so Chitin it's a is, carapace. <laughs> the carapace is the part of the body. Yeah. And it's yeah. made out of it's, material. It's made of chitin. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a chitinous So is a lobster chitinous? Yeah. Yeah. I think you could say It has that. a carapace. Yeah. But a snail. <laughs> what? I'm using it right no, now. Yeah, a snail is correct. A, doesn't have a chitin? A, a carapace. <laughs> it is a shell. It is a That's shell. That's different. Yeah. It's but is a shell chitinous? No, I think it's I think it's calciferous. It's, it's, decidu- it's, it's like deciduous. A... Yeah. <laughs> uh, big hey, word. Listen, listen. Uh, big, big word. Big word. <laughs> that, those aren't big words. We're going back. All right. We're taking we're taking it back to the hotel, motel, Holiday Inn. Dark Sun. Yeah. Dark Sun. I like it. I was impressed. Yeah. It's my preferred. No, I, I think it's becoming my preferred setting. Chris is convincing me, and I tell you what, I, I was worried. So you guys have talked a lot after the game, like we actually talked about it on the drive up this morning. Yeah, a lot. we wanted to have this conversation yeah. here. Oh, it's, we, it's, it's well, we can it's leave. Pertinent. No, no, no. You guys are welcome to input. Um, I feel like magic as a device, it would not be friendly. It would not be cool. You would not be able to make, if magic was real, you would not be able to make bags of holding that are very polite and serve your needs. Magic would be dangerous and horrible, and Dark Sun is a universe that was wrecked by magic. And I think that if we had magic, that is what would happen. He, Chris does see. not like so the you, idea. You like the apocalyptic nature of the, of the magic. Yeah, I think, I think in trying to make a bag of holding, you would... Create dark side. Yeah, That's where that comes up. from. <laughs> That's like, the inevitable. You know what would be cool is if it we use this be, arcane yeah. power to make something that holds my shit. <laughs> and then I just blighted the landscape. <laughs> okay, so, so you're saying that this is it's like when you try to make a convenience. <laughs> it wouldn't of, be convenient. There's nothing it's like convenient trying to use magic. an atom bomb to cook food. What you what did you do? Well, I used magic and I turned this sack into an endless void that will hold all my it's stuff. A mega sack. What happens if you turn it inside out? No, don't Dark Sun. Yeah. <laughs> there was a desert in there. <clears throat> uh, but no, for me, like uh you know, the first time that we actually sat down, I mean as as young men I'd go over to Dragon Tales. Do you remember at the Y? Yeah. No, you were not into this stuff yet. Not so at all. Do you even remember that store? I remember the store, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dragon Tales was a place 
um, right across mm-hmm. the street from the the restaurant I washed dishes at, um, which was called Chapter Eleven, um, which eventually filed bankruptcy. Which <laughs> it's like you're you're fucking you're asking for it, guys. You know what I'm saying? You're shaking your fist at the guy. You're invoking that exactly. Um, but I would take my tips, like you know, after every shift, I'd take my tips and I'd head over there and I'd buy a pack of magic cards. Or I'd save up my tips for a few days and get a supplement. Sure. And one of the first big boxes, like one of the first boxed sets that I purchased over there was Dark Sun. was the original Dark Sun. Um, and it, I mean, and, and be, because I took that ownership over, over, that, um, over that set, like, I also, it was also the first time where we, t- where we took a campaign and really tried to make our own sort of... Uh, you know, complete campaign. Like we had campaigns, but we were we were you know we were aping Weiss and Hickman or something. Like we were trying to be, we were trying to play the books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. And this was something where we were we were really trying to we were trying to make our own collaborative story. And well, I think it's very easy in you know the normal D and D universe to fall into the Lord of the Rings and the Dragonlands. Yeah, and yeah. Sort of fall into those traps. And they're good. I mean, they're good yeah. traps. Yeah, you know. You want to spend some time in those traps, but when but you're when you're put into a world like Dark Sun, there's not a lot to. Uh, I like that it's so foreign. Yeah, there's like, there's scary. nothing to really draw. Yeah, no, on. it's really cool because I think that especially those of us that have been playing since junior high, when when you say there's some elves over on the horizon, you're like, okay, who gives a shit. But <laughs> you know what that means. Yeah, but yeah. when Jerry says you see elves in Dark Sun, you're like. Oh shit! What does they're, they're that mean? They're wearing feathers. What is that? They're yeah, running the fuck at out you. of here! I don't and know. They're, what they're running in like a herd. Right. That's bizarre. Right. And this is how they've adapted. I think I was skeptical because I've never been. A f- I've. I guess I've never been a fan of an overuse of post-apocalyptic settings. Like, oh sure. It's like. Star Wars is great. Yeah, but what if everything was fucked? Let's make a movie about that. And then when you get Blade <laughs> Runner, that's cool. But then it's it just goes on and on and on. Everything's post-apocalyptic, and then it's just. It's bleak. And it's, you know, it's like, what would make D&D better? What if nobody had swords or water? You know? <laughs> okay, awesome. That'll be fun to play. God damn it. No. But it it is. You know, it wasn't bleak. Dark Sun wasn't bleak. It was just this really kind of... Yeah, people make a... It's hard, but it people felt make more a life like, there. Like a fully yeah, realized it world. But, like, it America. made me... I wanted to dig in. Like, yeah, no, like I do, that too. That was not enough play. No. Time. I wanted to understand that world. Well, we should play again. We just barely scratched the surface. What is what again. is Eberron? Is Eberron more steampunk <clears throat> or post-apocalyptic? Eberron's more uh, um, like don't they have like lightning trains that run on rails and yeah 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 I mean so there's like machines so it's very there's steampunk-y. machines but they're magical machines well right? Eber- yeah Eberron ele- elemental and magical yeah. machines right so I mean with Eberron it's I'm like, so on your page now <laughs> it's you've ruined me like do you remember when you were playing in in Mike's campaign and 148 is a is a warforged, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, those those sentient automatons are from Eberron. Like that that was that was where they were first. I always thought of him like a golem. Like if you yeah. open him up, there's wood in there. There's no. What, what if we had trains in D and D? Well, how would trains run? I guess we we'll have to come up with a complex rule system. No nope, magic. But let's not talk about her. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm. Yeah, I I was glad to get out of the traditional, you know, elves sure. dancing around in a forest. Like I really wanted to see. Some dire time, and I think it'll run its course for me. You know, I mean, my my characters in in uh, the characters in my game, I think, are level twenty now or something like that, and they're going to hit the level cap probably this year. We'll be it's done so with crazy. this. We'll be done with this campaign, and then you know, whoever runs the next campaign, may, maybe it will be science fiction, or maybe it will be uh, Eberron or something like that. But Cause it's hard to imagine hitting the level cap. Yeah, what dictates that cap? Well, the powers and stuff only go up to level 30, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's sort of, it, it's, you know, it's in the construction of the character now that, you know, as they reach the end of that, as they reach the end of that power arc, I mean, they get some pretty strange... They become gods, essentially. I was going to say, is it still happening where they could become deities? Yeah. Essentially? That's, one, that's one path. I mean, there's just, there's sure. a lot of ways to interpret, you know, that's, what happens at That's the end. scary. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. fascinates yeah, me. Yeah, but I mean, but those adventures, I mean, you can have a couple of those, but it gets pretty far out there. When my brother was visiting, he um, played D&D on the Saturday that we played with uh, Brad and your sister. Yeah. And um, he's playing with his friend, Robert Howard, who used to live in Dallas, lives here now. He's been playing 
with that guy and one form of that group probably for eight or ten years. Wow. And they have – they've been through adventures where like they were talking at lunch about remember when – as yeah. if it really happened. Yeah, yeah, right? no, sure. And so they were talking about this one deity or something. And remember when so and so this this god made you go through these trials and stuff. And I was like, "What deity is that?" He sounds cool. And Brian goes, "He's not in the book. He was my first character." Oh. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they just kind of incorporated him into the lore. You know that oh. Brian used to play him, and that's, now he's a part of the DMs. Yeah, <clears throat> that's pretty cool. See, but that's Stable. that's the thing. I mean, that's the other way you can go. I mean, you can you can either as a dungeon master or as a player, you can try to find you know you can try to get a hook into some new novelty. The other way to go, and I think that this is this is probably you know the more interesting way long term, is just to move on in that world, you know, a world that the other that your other party that this other party has shaped, mm-hmm. and to and to travel forward from that from that point. Start new characters in the in the world that was you know, oh yeah right. absolutely in a in a world that's been shaped a I mean, post Tiamat world or whatever right. yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah 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 I mean in a world that was shaped by those other guys in, in, in a world that they may occasionally reappear in yeah as like an NPC or something that's I mean that that's really exciting like yeah as a as a the, the, creating the foundation of a world really. Merrick is like the king of a nation and... exactly like uh, what what what's it what's it like to serve <laughs> what's it like to serve yeah him? yeah he, like at the beginning of of every Conan movie it was him as a king and he's like but that is a story for another time you know, <laughs> then Conan became the king and he was on the throne and pissed because it's not as fun as killing people and saying prom that <laughs> that that's always the that's always like. It's such an enduring image. Just yeah. a bored Conan. Just a bored barbarian on a throne. How did I end up here? Oh God. <laughs> I, this this job sucks. <laughs> These adventures are bullshit. <laughs> Don't let him promote you. Don't let him do anything. <laughs> to take you out of the seat of that starship. Yeah. Exactly. Isn't there a term for Star being Trek. promoted into uh out of what you're good the, at? The Peter Principle. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The what? Yeah, you get promoted to the level until you are bad at it. <laughs> until you're bad you're at it. You're excellent, so you get promoted. You're excellent at this, you get promoted. You're not as great at it, but you're pretty good at this, so you get promoted again. Now you're lost because you're not good at this anymore, so you're not going to get promoted anymore. But that's the position and you you're, And you're ruining the company. And yeah. you're not doing a good with job. Every, with and it's it. called the what? The Peter, the Peter Principle. Why is it Why called the Peter, Peter Principle? Because Peter sucked. He was a terrible boss. <laughs> he was a jerk. He was Nobody really, he was really good in the mail room. <laughs> Best at mail. He's incredible. <laughs> All right, I said you've you've DM'd a lot of other stuff before, right? As a young man. What? Well, when you I first passed, I passed the mantle on. When you first did Dark Sun, how was that different from uh, doing a traditional campaign in the um, in the traditional well, setting? You know what was really fun, and I hope that this is something that they maintain in the new um, in the new book. I mean, I, I, I have some of the materials <laughs> enough to run a game, but I don't have all of it. Mm. Is that um, you know, for players, there was a lot about Dark Sun, when it was first established, that was not known either to players or dungeon masters, mm-hmm. and it's like that was that was really exciting. It's like nowadays, it's like oh, you know, we need to have all the information, like we need every, absolutely everything explained. But back then, there were uh, there was a lot of places for for your party. I mean, this is this is part of what allowed us to make a campaign there that really felt personal. There's just a lot of stuff that's not de- that was not defined. Or they just leave it up to the DM. You think it's too fleshed out? I think I think I think a lot of times, yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously, if, if you're you know, you can always find you can always find places, you know, to do stuff, and or you can find something that they fleshed out and then continue to elaborate on it, like with Nimrozaran, right? Yeah. So he's like an NP, he's an NPC dude. He does this thing. And it's like we, you know, we could write a book series on the the stuff that we've come up for with for that guy who's a couple paragraphs. Well, I think it's also worth you know. Pointing out that uh, you know, so in my campaign, I guess is Greyhawk considered the the generic sort of the base D and D. Yeah, oh, is it is Greyhawk now the generic? I thought that was a separate campaign. Um, well, I mean, it, it's in general terms, Greyhawk has been is pretty fundamental. Yeah, I mean, okay. they're, they're, a, lot, a lot of spell names are based on Greyhawk, yeah. and the campaign basically started in you know Greyhawk, right? Okay, yeah. But they've gone to places like they went to a city called Corollis that was essentially Eberron. Right. You know, there's, and they have an airship. There's no reason that if you want to mess around in Dark Sun that you have to play Dark Sun. Like, y- you can mix all this stuff together. Definitely, definitely. But I'm talking about really serious. Well, that's some old school. I'm talking right about there. really serious stuff like like the nature of a sorcerer king. Sure. Like their actual 
purpose yeah and their true desires which is which i mean their motivations are pretty core to are pretty core to the the world yeah i mean they're they're tied directly into what makes it the way it is um and that was not known to players or dungeon masters at first um that was detailed in a series of books which were actually pretty good troy denning at his best and then they released this book here that is crazy the second Dragon edition King. that's right the Dragon Kings by Timothy B. Brown. Here, even on the cover of this Dark Sun book, the sun is dark. Yeah. It's like a black sun. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe those what's coming out of those cracks is like super bright, to bright enough to make a regular sun. But I mean, does the, does the sun being dark ever come into play? Or is it just, does it just mean like dark as in spooky? <laughs> spooky sun. There's things I don't know. Maybe that comes out in the next box. Look, set. at the top of every page, there's a goddamn dark sun. <laughs> Someone Wikipedia that. Yeah, anyway, so but I'm saying that like when they put this when they put this book out, it was like, oh shit, this is serious business. The art has gotten a lot better. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, in some ways <clears throat> they had good they had good Brom covers. Look, and sometimes the interior stuff. I am I am partial to the art in the original D and D stuff because it was all Jeff D and Bill Willingham, and you guys don't know those names, but they went on to make. Oh awesome. really? Yeah, Bill Willingham. Yeah, yeah. Bill Willingham cut his teeth on um, D and D. He did some art for original modules that were pretty cool, and then he moved on to form a new game company called Fantasy Games Unlimited, and he made Villains Vigilantes, which was a superhero based game. Yep. And then he took that yeah. into his comics work. Nice. Yeah. Like I have, I have one or two modules he did that was the basis of his comic series Elementals. Wow. But it all comes out of role playing. It's pretty cool. Yeah, but but they, but they kicked this stuff, they kicked this stuff out, and then I mean, it really it it changed a, a, a especially dungeon masters, and I, and I would say that this is this is probably something that players, in general, it's okay now, but it, this is this is really this is the secret stuff, you know, this is stuff that you should have, this is stuff that that the uh, book design got better too, huh? Yeah, the yeah. layout of stuff. Yeah, yeah this well, I'm is, just trying to. Parse you're, out you're trying to parse out. These, so you, these you, exactly. Codes. You're trying. You're trying. You're looking at those stat blocks, and they're nonsense. AD right. Eighty twelve plus eight star six ar seven hits eight ml n slash a m v nine. It's like database programming. You see what I'm saying? Like this is nonsense. That's what D and D. Cause horror minus three. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but it's like minus that fits. six. But it's minus three horrors. <laughs> no, I want that. Can I get that? What was cast AD on me? armor? <laughs> um, well, a lot of that stuff that's in there. They had another. They had another um, table combat. They changed. They added a whole new mechanic in Dark Sun. Um, it, was, it wasn't necessarily Dark Sun specific, but um, you could do mass. You could do mass battles. Oh, oh here's the Thrykreen guys you were talking about. Yeah, they got yeah. necklaces. They yeah. really are mantis. Well, here, here, let me, let me, here. I have another book. I kind of thought you were making all that up. No, no, they're the best. There's even different kinds of. They're they disgusting. make weapons out of spit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's even different kinds of thread cream. But no, no, no. Look, I mean, this is. Jeez. That, that's another oh, yeah. interpretation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I prefer the more mantid, uh, looking face. That's but, crazy. But uh, I mean, these, these are the things that these are just the things that I like about, that I like about Dark Sun. Wounds and chitin. Oh, look, this looks exactly like what we were. These animals pulling some kind of chitinous carapace. Yeah, right. <laughs> carapace chitinous. I mean, these are the, these are the experiences I had as a young man that I wanted to communicate to you guys. Like, I wanted you guys to have these images um, in your minds. I but really I mean, want but to I mean, back then, hand. so you can so you can look at you can look at this at at, at uh, Dragon Kings, and it has a lot of extra rules that sort of the sort of the sort of glom on to the regular <laughs> system. Uh, these guys are riding in a chariot and they're shooting bows and arrows. It says, sudden sharp turns may cause the light chariot to flip or break an axle. Whenever the chariot is moving at full speed and attempts to turn greater than 45 degrees, the driver must make an animal handling proficiency check <laughs> to avoid flipping. Those inside are thrown from the vehicle. They must make dexterity checks to avoid 3d6 points of damage. Which Ooh. is a lot. Can we agree that that's a lot? Yeah. That's a bear. So you have, you have the, the basic setting... Which, like, if you go out and buy the first three books, like the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Player's Handbook, yeah. are from. You have Eberron. Sure. Which is out now. You have Dark Sun, which is coming out. How many of these worlds are there? 
Um, back from back in the day, like the classic stuff? Yeah, that they could draw Dark Sun, on. Eberron, Dragonlance, Planescape. Oh, Dragonlance is its own setting? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hmm. Planescape. We played, we played Dragonlance before we played Dark Sun. Hmm. You, can, man, you can have good times on Kryn, for real. Yeah. I bet. Um, but yeah, Dragonlance, Spelljammer, we discussed Plane, that yeah, with you Planescape. before. Right? Spelljammer is different than Planescape? Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Spelljammer predates it substantially. Hmm. Planescape is kind of jumping around all over the place. <laughs> You can go to Dark Sun. Then you yeah, yeah. To... What's weird is that Planescape. What 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 Planescape sets up is the idea that between all the places that you know is another place, and it has its own kind of culture. Isn't that Sigil? Yeah, yeah. Sigil is the main city, but people who travel people who travel from plane to plane have a kind of culture. Oh, sure. And and uh, characters can can take full advantage of that stuff. But the problem with Planescape and with Dark Sun. Um, before was that and a lot of times when you, you'll add these new systems right yeah. and then these systems just sort of sit on top of the old systems right it's just all new stuff and it's like none of it actually works together yeah and what i liked when from when i had the from the chunks of the book that i had was that yeah so now we have these templates right so it's a it's a type of character but you can apply it to any any class yeah Right? I mean, before this would have been described in some little paragraph somewhere. What are you shaking your head right? for? This is horrifying. Why? Undead war beetle. You can live in it, and it's like oh, it's like being things. inside a giant corpse. I love these things. You need a wizard to drive a it. Yeah. Magically animated. But except rather beetles. than being pulled, it walks because yeah. it's undead. Let's do it. Let's get one of those. We'll name it Sally. <laughs> we'll ride. We'll drive in it. But anyway, the, the basic idea it's is that like a, a template is just like, like a, bus. a paragon path. Sure. It just applies to the first ten levels. Like th- they've added the new stuff, but it all fits into the regular system, so that people who are new players can actually conceive of some of this stuff. Which I prefer. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't. You like I to be able to conceive yeah, of it. Yeah, I, I enjoy being able to understand what's going on. I do. I do not remember what D and D was like when I played it in junior high. I just got excited to be playing yeah. with people. I don't remember what what math we had to employ. I'm glad I came in when I did. I mean, it seems sort of like a renaissance. This is this is yeah. what happened, Mike. You came in at a good time, and this yeah. is why I got really angry when Fourth Edition came out, and some of the purists got really pissy about it. It's that D and D went from humble beginnings as a, a game called Chainmail, right? Boy, this is the this is the image I remember as Dark yeah, Sun. Yeah, that is Dark Sun that right guy. there in a picture. Um, to being first, you know, kind of like Ooh. the blue and red box D and D, to being Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, second, third, and fourth edition. And by the time you got to like three point five, it was this ridiculous chaos of rules, and people just got caught up in the minutia. They just got right. caught up in the idea of knowing every goddamn rule. But it was how much not jerky did you bring with you when you went out on this? Hike. And oh, it's like, that's not enough jerky. And it's like, what kind, of, what kind of jerky? Yeah. yeah. This is one of my favorite pictures. You have to go shopping. You do. It's like a supermarket. But you know, I mean, I guess fifth edition will come out, and then we'll be like, oh man, fourth edition was where it's at. Yeah. yeah how can you ever change? Yeah, we'll, we'll, be, out, we'll be out on the porch. No, no, no. I just, there, there's a, an image in here that like has just stuck in my head the whole time, and I, I was, I kept thinking I would work it into the... Uh, Adventure, but I didn't have a chance. Oh, Chachka. So there that is no like metal on Dark Sun. Doesn't it? No. I didn't have to worry about it because my character's weapons were his hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if there's what if no there metal, was no what hands? Was, like, I had a sword and an axe. Yeah, yeah. You, you, were you had a bone. bone. You were made out of chitin you, or exactly. glass or something. And, um, Stop saying but, that but, word. <laughs> but your, but your, your bastard sword is actually a metal sword, which would have been super rare. Oh. Wow. Yeah, my, um, this, this this is it, dude. This this is this is my Thrycreen image. Just this, this hatchling Thrycreen, like, hey, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> and this one's like, kind of like, come on, guys. He got hands on his hips. Could it's you like, play? Such as they are. Your egg cluster is in ruins. Yeah, now, was Thrycreen just an NPC class, or can you could you be a Thrycreen? Oh yeah, oh you could. Yeah, my brother uh, my brother played would... in a planar campaign where. Um, they ended up in Dark Sun for a little bit. They fell through a portal in Dark Sun. That's not technically possible. Oh, really? Well, they made it possible. <laughs> but he landed in, uh, they all landed in their full plate. And so their adventure in Dark Sun was running. It was a lot of Everybody heat. wanted their metal, their Why plate. is it not technically possible? Uh, it's, it's, I thought you said that between all these worlds, there was a place. But Dark Sun always was yeah, separate of exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see how they try to fit it into the... 
the new mechanics? Because, I mean, the sort of the cosmology is a little bit different now than it used to be. It used to be a lot more complex. Um, but it is, it's actually sort of separated mm. by, it's sort of separated by a plane from the rest of this stuff. Whatever, magic. Wigga booga boo yeah, from Dark Sun. Say, when in doubt, wizards were responsible. Hmm. Now my favorite part of oh, my favorite part of that adventure was finding out that um finding the, the magic hidden in the in the knotted rope and like yeah. oh no, this is bad news. Well I'll tell you something interesting. I talked to Jerry about this after the game and maybe you guys already knew this, but the the scout, um the blind scout that had the what was it, Palantis? Yeah. Was it a palantir. A palantir? No, nah, he, he, it's a, like, the compass? Yeah, he had, like, sand in his hand and the ball would spin. Yeah. Jerry made all that up. Oh, you did? Yeah. That wasn't a part of Dark Sun? No, I just thought you would like it. That's cool. And then he killed him. Right away. Yeah. yeah. But I thought that That's was... So I, we could that have was the ball. cool. Like, the image of having to keep sand in your hand and this ball sort of spinning in it, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, I just, I thought, this, this, these, these are the third sort of things I wanted you to enjoy. We did. See? But now it's ruined. <laughs> I thought it was a part of the Dark Sun world. It's, but it's runt. Not I wanted to get my own ball. They, they haven't printed the books yet. Maybe they can hmm. still add it. Wizards, hear me. How did you make up that? Put did you Jerry's make up the word? Ball. Which sand. the table lander? <laughs> table lander. That's what you called it. Yeah. Did you make up that word? Well, the table lands is the area. Oh. Okay. That, that whole sort of that, that whole sort of blasted out. So a table lander. A table lander is uh, something that you use to navigate the table lands. Hmm. Yeah, I listen, I, I'm overjoyed that it felt real. It did feel. I thought it was in a supplement. That's real solid. This is what I'm talking about. Copyright See you guys. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, so there's already a huge, there's already a huge problem. <laughs> We're done.